Below our mission description down here, we want to show the pictures, names, and roles of each crew member from that mission, which means matching up data that came from two different JSON files. If you remember, our JSON split across over here, missions.json and astronauts.json, the two different files. And this eliminates some duplication in our data because some astronauts took part in multiple missions. But it does mean we've got to write some code to bring them together, to resolve over here in our missions, the word name uh, Armstrong, for example, with over here, Armstrong is actually Neil A. Armstrong and then uh, his bio down here. Because on one side, in the mission side, we say simply Armstrong was the commander. Then in the astronaut side, it says Neil Armstrong had his description, yada, 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 but it has no concept that he was a commander on Apollo 11. So what we're going to do is make our mission view accept this mission uh, it's working with right now, which is fine, but also our full astronaut's dictionary and then have code inside here to figure out which astronauts actually took part in this particular launch. And so we're going to add a nested struct inside our mission view. We'll say there's a struct called crew member. This has a role and an astronaut attached to it. Here. What they did and who they actually are. Two pieces in different JSON files merged together now. And now for the tricky part. We're going to add a new property here that stores an array of our crew member objects. These are fully resolved. That means role plus astronaut pairing from both places. And at first, that's simple. You just say, well, my crew is an array of crew member. Fine, that's easy. But then how do we set that property? Well, think about it. If we make this view be handed all its mission and all its astronauts, we can loop over the mission crew and say, go for the first one, second one, third one, and look up the IDs for those crew members in the astronauts dictionary to find the matching astronaut. And when we find one, we can put that into a, a crew member instance here. But if we don't find it somehow, it means we've got a crew member here with an invalid or unknown name. That should never happen. Like if you've added some JSON to your project that points to missing data in your app, you've made a fundamental mistake at a logic error. Don't try and write error handling code to work around it. It should never be allowed to happen in the first place. You've shipped invalid data built into your app. If you download it, it's wrong, fine. It's live server stuff. But you've shipped it to the app store with bad data, it should never happen. So this is a great example of where using <coughs> fatal error is a very good idea. Um, if we cannot find astronaut from the ID, just exit straight away and complain very loudly so we can fix the bug straight away. Let's put into action now. We're going to add a custom initializer into our mission view uh, that will accept the mission it represents, Apollo 1, for example, or with all the astronauts. And then it'll stash the mission away so we can show the badge and the description and so forth but then figure out that array of resolved astronauts, the crew members done for us. So we'll say as initializer here, takes a mission here, uh, like this, mission, mission, but we'll accept that astronauts dictionary. Astronaut is a string astronaut dictionary. And it will go ahead and stash away our mission value, like so. That's the easy part. The more complex part, is then going ahead and figuring out that crew array. We're gonna say self.crew is our missions crew, that's crew role objects as you can see, dot map. Give me one crew member coming in each time. And our job is to look up that member's name in the astronaut's dictionary. It'll say, oh, give me uh, uh, Armstrong, give me Collins, give me you know Aldrin, whatever. We'll grab that out of the astronaut's dictionary. So we'll say if let astronaut equals astronauts of member.name. So find Armstrong, find Collins, find Aldrin, whatever, da, 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 find, you know, uh, Grissom, whatever. If we can do that, great. We now have the crew member, which tells them their role on this mission. And we have the astronaut themselves with their name and description attached. 
If we have that, we're going to send back our crew member with a role of member.role and astronaut of the astronaut we found in our dictionary. If that fails, there's bad JSON data shipping in our live app store app. Then we say, fatal error, we're missing member.name. Just bail out. Don't try and recover somehow. Just shout loudly, it's gone wrong. We can fix it and move on. As soon as that codes in, you're going to see our preview struct will stop working down here. Again, failing is more information here. We've got to pass in all the astronauts now as well. And that's simple as having that second line we had before in content view, which is let astronauts be a dictionary of string astronaut. Boom, which is bundle.main.decode astronauts.json and pass that into the mission view. So astronauts is astronauts, like that. Good, working nicely. So now we have all our astronaut data. We can show that directly below the mission description using a horizontal scroll view. We're gonna add a little bit of extra styling here so it looks good in the screen, little capsule, clip tip and so forth, you'll see. So uh, we have, this is our mission description here. Just after that, I'm gonna say, make a new scroll view going horizontally but also set shows indicators to be false. So it will not show a little bar above our astronauts. It'll be hidden away nicely. We'll then make a H stack, so going left to right, and then loop over all our crew using the ID of the role that is unique for each mission. Give me one crew member coming in, and inside they'll make a navigation link. Navigation link showing, uh, let's go down slightly, the uh, astronauts details, nought details, as destination. And for the label, we're gonna do a complex label here with the image, I'll do crew member, astronaut, oops, astronaut, dot ID. That's like Armstrong, you can see already it appears, boom, straight away, there we go. One person there. Uh, is that Gus Grissom? Gosh, my remember rem is terrible. Um, then make it resizable, nice and small, and then give a frame with width 104, height 72. That's a proportion of the regular size, by the way, already pre-calculated. Uh, I give this thing a clip shape of capsule, oops, dot capsule. There we go. Beautiful. Then give an overlay, so we can draw a nice line over it, like this. There we go. Or another capsule with stroke border, I'll use uh, dot white with line width, oops, line width of one. There we go. So now it has the uh, picture of each person there, we can see them. And then after the image, so uh, that is here, I'm gonna add another V stack with alignment of leading with the crew member dot astronaut Nought dot name with a foreground style of white, please. White, there we go. Eh, it's got to be my thought it was. Um, then a font of headlines, a bit bolder on the screen, there we go. Then the crew member's role, what they did in the board mission, and foreground style is to secondary. So that looks, yeah, great. Then We'll add a little bit of padding, pull these things slightly further apart from each other. Um, so we'll say that's on the H-stack down here. Beautiful. Actually, it's too horizontal only, perhaps. No need of vertical padding, is there really? Horizontal. Yeah, great. So that's how it's going to look on the screen. You can swipe through and see that horizontally now. I notice there's no scroll bar here. It's been turned off now. Um, you might wonder why I've placed the uh, crew details here after this VStack and not inside it. Um, and the reason is these uh, like horizontal scroll views work best when they are nicely edited to start with, like this, they don't start like that, but they go fully edge to edge. 
So they don't stay indented, they actually go right to the edge of the screen. Uh, and so I want to make sure they don't have um, padding pushing it fully out uh, inside the view, otherwise it looks strange. So if we had put it in the same V stack as the mission highlights, then it would scroll strangely. Yeah, the, the view would be clipped. You'd sort of scroll here and it would kind of end the picture in that line. There'd be a blank spot here, which look, would look strange. Anyway, we're going to make this navigation link here do something more useful shortly. Obviously, it's quite dull right now. Um, just going into uh, nothing at all, really. Um, there's no nav stack right now. Let's give it a command R, perhaps. You should at least see it shows astronaut details, which is dull. Um, but we're going to get to that view first, of course. So you can see it goes to detail view right now. Back in our main content view, that's over here, we're going to change this thing, our detail view destination on this screen. That's going to point to our mission view with the correct mission, passing in all the astronauts every time. So I'll say mission view, mission is our mission, astronaut is our astronauts, boom. And now give it a try because it should be becoming useful almost. I'll choose Apollo 11, there we go, da, da, da. there is Neil Armstrong, tap on Neil, astronaut details. So it's kind of coming together, not ideal, but we're getting there slowly. Um, before you move on, have a go, just customizing the way uh, these things look on the screen. Um, noodle around if you want to, you know, just look at the capsule clip shape, for example, look at the overlay, you know, try a rounded rectangle if you want to, um, use different fonts, different colors, mark who the mission commander was, for example, it, it's, it's down to you, noodle around if you want to. Um, in my project, I think it's probably useful to um, add some separation between the uh, you know, layout here basically. Um, there's a special view for this in Swift UI called a divider. Um, and so we can basically have the mission badge and description and the crew more clearly split up using this divider here. Um, the divider view exists in Swift UI. It's not very customizable. It's basically a skinny line. And so to get something more useful, I'm gonna just draw a custom divider to break up our view neatly. And so, um, before the mission highlights bit, so up in our mission view uh, here, so just here, I'm gonna add a little custom divider. Um, like I said, there is one built in. If I just write divider, it exists. Um, that's it there. You can just, it's <laughs> its almost invisible. Um, I'm gonna say actually I want a rectangle with a frame height of two. That'll be clearer, Badoom. <laughs> Um, and then say a foreground style of, let's do light background. So, you know, a bit fainter, and then say a bit of padding vertically, um, like that. Um, I think it looks better, probably push it from the edges slightly, matching the indents for the uh, mission highlights things. If I push that inside my uh, inner V stack, yeah, it's better, isn't it? Just matching the padding on the left and right there, I think a little bit. And now uh, do the same thing again. So put it onto your clipboard here and put it after the description. So down here, again, inside the indent. So it keeps that nice uh, spacing like that. So you can now see more clearly, we've got a nice badge, little indented uh, divider, our text, another divider, and then our main uh, thing at the bottom here. Um, so that's a bit better. Um, you might notice, by the way, that uh, the text is, uh, actually gray here in my um, preview area, but adopts a bluish color in the um, simulator. That's because here they aren't actually active links. They don't go anywhere, whereas over here they do. As uh, so you can see, it's adopted sort of like a link color thing. I'm not particularly fond of that, actually. Can we ditch that? Maybe go for like a white opacity of, 0.5 something. Let's see how that looks. See how it's any better. Uh, da -da -da. There we go. That's better, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Um, uh, we're going to add one more thing a little title here for our crew so it kind of says who they actually are. This has to be done carefully because, yes, it relates to the scroll view here, but it has to have the same padding as our text above that looks neat on the screen. Uh, and so. The best place for this is actually uh, inside the V stack. 
this one here. Even though it actually relates to this thing down here, this already has the padding in place, making it look correct, aligned with the rest of the mission highlights. And so, directly after that little divider we've made, I would do text crew with font title of bold, and then add a bit of padding to the bottom, like so. And that should look about right. Let's find out. Yeah. So it, it, it's, you know, it, it looks like it's part of the crew, which we care about, but it's aligned neatly with the rest of the mission highlights text, thanks to it being inside that nested vStack. Um, you don't have to put it there, of course. You could if you wanted to move outside the vStack and then apply padding just to that one view. But if you do that, please make sure you keep the two in sync. If you change the padding of one, change the padding of the other so they look neatly aligned on the screen.